Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020. If you're watching this on the day I post it, it is the eve of the release of Flight Sim 2024. And of course there is excitement, but also some concern about what the state of the sim will be. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many bugs there will be. The alpha had some crashes for me, but also what will be compatible with it, even if we're talking about down the line, not like immediately on release. Of course, it'd be great if everything worked uh, immediately, on, immediately on release as far as third party developed planes are concerned, but I doubt that. Uh, so, you know, what will be updated eventually. But it did occur to me that there is one plane that there are no plans to make compatible with Flight Sim 2024. And that is the experimental Dark Star that was part of the Top Gun Maverick tie-in update. And that, if you don't know about it, that was available in the marketplace for free. And it included liveries for the F-A-18 and also some missions for the F-A-18. Uh, but the Dark Star is unique in that it can go very, very fast. Cruise speed, 5,300 knots. <laughs> Uh, max altitude is actually higher than that. It goes to 275,000. Its range is also higher than that. I've tested it. It goes 5,000. So it's a crazy uh, Mach 10 plane from the movie. And well, we might, uh, we, we were at this point not going to be able to fly it in the new sim. So I decided, I, I don't know if this is going to be the last time I fly it. I'll still have flights in 2020 installed. But just to commemorate the audaciousness of it, I decided that I should fly it and, you know, just give it a twirl ahead of Flight Sim 2024 com coming out because, uh, you know, if all goes well with Flight Sim 2024, I'll be spending a lot more time there than here. So I should probably fly it now. So that's the idea. I've got a plot across Asia because uh, previously I had done the mission, which was across the United States, and then I flew around the world with it. But in flying around the world with it, I actually went south across the Indian Ocean to Australia. And um, so I never really got to do this particular flight path. I've tried to plot it so that I'm not flying over anywhere that would uh, even think about shooting me down. Of course, that would be impossible with this thing. But uh, yeah, going to land at Taiwan is the plan, but we'll see if I can get that far. Okay, so there's our Dark Star. In reality, it would need to be much larger than this in order to just contain the fuel. The fuel volume doesn't quite work. It's sort of like the TARDIS. It's got more volume inside than it apparently should. But anyway, I'm all in favor of magic sometimes. So here we go. Getting this past, past Mach 1 is actually the tough part. <laughs> As awkward as that is. Okay. Up. And gear up. We'll fly over Istanbul. Main part of Istanbul over to the right side here. Sorry, we're pretty high up already. And there are many bridges between the continents, but there's a nice big one over there. Pretty tall bridge, that one. Okay, waving to Istanbul. I wonder how it'll look in Flight Sim 2024. Hopefully better. It's a little bit generic for Flight Sim 2020, despite its sheer size and everything. Not too many sights within it. I'm gonna get it to a nice height before trying to past Mach 1. It has severe issues otherwise. Oh. Did I not have afterburner on? Okay, well, I have now lit the afterburner. Well, that would have been hard trying to pass Mach 1 without that, huh? Okay. I didn't realize... I did not recall that that was separate for this one. But alright. Separate afterburner. Okay, 0.99, and I'll follow the velocity vector, Mach 1. To get decisive, we better not have too much of an angle of attack. Here we go, 1.15, probably pull up now. 
Yep, going up and accelerating. Very important. Fairly quiet up front. Not that loud in the back. As we go across northern Turkey. To 120,000 feet. It's decelerating. Don't do that. Well, I'll hang out here for a bit at 54,600. But regain some speed. Mach 2. And now climbing a bit more decisively. Well, we have accelerated past Mach 3.5 here, so I think I can go up. We're probably just guzzling fuel at this point. We are now past SR-71 speeds. Still northern Turkey. Well, indicator speed is no longer visible. <laughs> There's no real indicator speed to speak of. Alright, fuel cell on. See if there's anything else over here. I don't think so. Okay. Scramjet. Okay, we're getting scramjet acceleration. Mach 4. The whine of the regular engine winding down. Ten thousand pounds per hour on that side, according to that. Well, it won't be too much fun going too high as far as seeing the landscape is concerned, but we do have to worry about that pounds per hour as it has now crept up to 38, 39,000, 40,000. So, I want one hour out of this. 5,000 knot ground speed. Mach 8 right now. Still climbing. Well, we'll need to zoom out the map a bit. I mean, regardless of the Mach speed, it's not like there's a whole lot more room on the true air speed eventually. Okay, well, throttling down is not a good idea. I think I messed it up. <laughs> well, now the Mach number is going down again. Oh, it needed afterburner turned on. A scramjet needs afterburner turned on? Oh yeah, I was going slow because afterburner got turned off. Weird. When I throw all down, afterburner got turned off. That's why. Okay, Mach 8.75. I really don't need it to go that fast, but whatever. Looks like going high is better for the fuel efficiency after all. They ought to be, but... Never know with fictional things. Oh, Mach number is going down though. Me, this is okay then. I don't know. Mach number is still going down as we try to go up. I sort of messed it up. Hopefully, I can get across. That's the Caspian Sea over there. Let's see, how many actually actual pounds do I have? I've got 17,000, nearly 18,000 pounds. 
about we're doing 45,000 pounds per hour, so yeah, we have to go up. Over to Caspian Sea. Nearly at 275,000 feet now, but the fuel consumption isn't down to where I'd like it to be. 37,000 pounds per hour. We are at the limit. Mach 9.93 and 20, uh, 275,000 feet. And I'm trying to turn back on to the track here. Humongous plains to the left. Mountains of Iran to the right. Okay, Mach 10 there. It's not helping anything in particular being at Mach 10 though. I think with the scenery being streamed in Flight Sim 2024, they probably don't want something flying this fast. So here we are, we're approaching the Himalayas. I should probably stop turning like this. Well, actually, probably still okay to turn like this. There's definitely curvature. <laughs> There's definitely a curvature. Just pointing that out. I guess there's the Indus River there. Whoops. That's the Indus River, I think. It doesn't seem too bothered to render clouds when I'm up here, that's for sure. It's basically given up on that, though we see two sort of patches here. Well, I think we're more than halfway through the trip, but I'm also way more than halfway through my fuel. We'll see. Himalayas and all the little rivers flowing out of the Himalayas. Well, little from this side. Yep, you don't often get the Himalayas at this height, but I'm losing sun. <laughs> I might have to adjust that. I think I want to see the Himalayas a little bit better. Not at this sun angle. Well, I wouldn't be able to tell which one was Everest, that's for sure. Somewhere over there. Okay, so somewhere around here is... Everest. Don't know where. Somewhere. Somewhere in view. Though the plane might be persistently covering it. Is Mount Everest. Anyway. The Himalayas, everyone. And the great turn continues. <laughs> well, actually, it probably shouldn't. Well, there's that huge convergence of rivers that flow out through Bangladesh. Ganges, Brahmaputra, etc. All flowing out right there. I mean, at this height, for a river to be that size is quite monumental. Okay, we're about to not have any more fuel, so let's see if I can get to Taiwan or whether I need to drop off at Hong Kong or something. Well, still at Mach 10 here for now over Vietnam. That is Vietnam. Oh, we just lost velocity there. Okay, 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 okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Calm down, calm down. Just Can I turn off the scramjet, please? Okay. Well, let's see how we can go with the remaining fuel for the regular drive. See how far we can get. 
still going 2,200 knots. So that's not too bad. But for how long? Seems like it could be for a while. Well, I decided to render clouds now that I'm at this altitude, and that's not great for seeing Hong Kong. If we're higher up, it doesn't render the clouds. But down here it does. And down here is 122,000 feet right now. Looks like we have lots of fuel left. I don't really want to use it all because it'll take a while. But we can get to Taiwan. We might even be able to get to Tokyo. Alright, I think I'll stick to the plan. Uh, I'll just ascend to Taiwan. We probably have enough fuel to go on to Japan, but... I think it's been a flight. I mean, it's been 5,000 nautical miles. I'm good. It's been more than an hour because of the time it took to accelerate. Okay, I should probably decelerate now. I hate decelerating. <laughs> In this especially. But okay, fine. Disengaging afterburner. not on, right? Yeah, no afterburner. Okay. Still maintaining speed pretty well. Okay, people, I'm coming in and I can't see directly in front of me. Well, except for the little computer display. Oh, there's a airliner. Looks fast, but uh, that's because I'm going really fast. It's just relative to me. <laughs> it's not really going that fast. And we're below the speed of sound. Maybe I should retract those. <laughs> no more spoilers. That's plenty of spoilers. I think I was supposed to land at Chiang Kai-shek. It'd be nicer to land closer to the city. So I was supposed to land at RCTP, but I'm looking more like at... RCSS. Well, there's the Dark Star. Will this be my last flight in it? I don't know. There are so many planes and so little time. Maybe I should close Sky for Sim right now. I have other navigational means. Well, we see a city there. A little bit hazy because of the lighting. Can I land this? Okay, little display. Where's my runway? <laughs> Is that the runway? Okay, I think that's the runway there. On the display, mind you. Oh, it's choppy right now. This is not good. Don't be choppy. Okay. Coming in hot. Oh boy. Ah, uh, okay, I need to go around, I think. Ah, uh, okay, well, I just... Oh, okay, no, no, no. Going around. It doesn't have flaps, I mean... Delta wing planes just don't have flaps, but... Sars give me a stall warning at 200 knots, though. <laughs> just sort of skimming along here. Trying to line up again. Yep, it definitely gives me the stall warning at 200. <laughs> not joking about that. Oh, and then it accelerates really fast, too. Oh, okay, I don't want to get too close to any buildings, though. We're on track, but I don't know what the altitude clearance is. I'm trying to stay low. 
but then there could be a building right in front of me. Oh, those are buildings. Okay, um, please don't be buildings right there. Okay, go down, go down, go down. Okay. <laughs> All right, we landed. I don't know what the vertical speed was, but we landed. It's better than Trump. Tom Cruise would have done. <laughs> Tom Cruise didn't bring it back. Anyway. All right, so that was a flight across Asia with the Dark Star. It's this enormous range and speed, which we will not have at our disposal in Flight Sim 2024 unless current plans are changed. Okay, I have parked here at Taipei. No, they actually have the mock profile here. It, uh, 30,000 is not good though anyway <laughs> so i wouldn't necessarily trust that okay i've pressed every button i think i can press and it's not turning off so i'll just say it was about an hour and 40 minutes and i'm wrapping it up here with that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time